Welcome back. Uh, building on the lactate testing presentation, I wanted to give you a framework that you can use for 95% of your training by volume. It's easy to get bogged down in all the discussion of zones and domains, but by using some anchors and some ceilings, which I'm going to present today, you'll be able to greatly simplify your endurance targeting. So let's start by defining terms and getting very specific about the anchors and the zones that I'm talking about. So I'm going to walk you through the traditional endurance training zones that you'll hear in a five zone system. So the first anchor is what is called aerobic threshold, lactate threshold one, lactate turn point one. And you can see it on this chart. It's the transition between zone one and zone two on a lactate test. So that line is the lactate reading of a lactate test. You normally have a flat line for a bit, and then linear progression once it starts going up, and then a change in slope at the second lactate threshold, often called functional threshold. So the points that I want to make clear is the first point, this aerobic threshold between zone one and zone two. So I want you to notice that. So when I'm talking, and this is an important point to target for training your slow twitch fibers. Then as we move up the curve, we start moving into what you'll hear referred to as the heavy domain. And that's when you're leaving zone two, you're getting into your tempo and your threshold training, but you're still below this functional threshold point lactate threshold two point. Now in there, you'll see I've marked a point called T minus threshold minus. This is a point that keeps coming up a lot when I talk to different coaches. It's a point that I targeted in my own training, that my coaches targeted in my training for me. And it's about two and a half to three millimole type effort. It's in the heavy domain. It's a tempo effort. And typically this point in a five zone system is going to fall between zone three and zone four. So it's a You'll have rhythmic breathing. You won't necessarily have burning in the legs. It's sort of a happy heart. And the purpose of this point is it's, it's challenging enough to recruit your intermediate fibers, but not so challenging that your recovery is delayed. So it does, it, the session is taxing, but it's taxing in a useful way. And so when, when you hear people talk about intensive training or polarized training. The bulk of the more intensive training is going to be targeted at this point, this T minus point. I think it's a, I think people get confused because they think, well, my hard training or my more intense training needs to be really hard. And they end up way above this point and they fry themselves. So what when you're starting out thinking about a, a polarized approach or even a, a pyramid approach, base training, and then you're moving into late base and into early specific prep, you want to start adding some intensity. This is the most valuable type of intensity. It's going to be what makes your body more aerobic in a sense because you're training these fog fibers, fast, fast oxidative fibers. The other point I want you to notice is that arrow that's running left from the word lactate, LT2 slash functional threshold, FT. This is the transition between the heavy domain and the severe domain, or the transition between zone four and zone five. It's where the recovery cost of the workout, of the set, of the session, of the interval is going to greatly increase. And from an endurance training point of view, you need a very good reason and you need a lot of self-control when you're going to the right, when you're in these, where what Alan has marked as these anaerobic zones, these, these higher intensity zones, they, you'll feel the burning in the legs, the clock is ticking. For today's purposes, we are going to stay well away 
from those zones. You need to use them with intent and it's not the subject of this video. So, the anchors. When you start using the anchors, I promise you they're going to feel too easy to you. You're going to be able to train above the anchor. So why use a low anchor? The reason is your specific average in a workout is not a good representation of what you're actually doing. It's what you need to do, and I pulled one of my files, and Zwift gives a nice visual representation of what I'm actually doing. When I ride an average, even smoothly, I'm training a range. So this average, this 172 watts, is actually a range from about 150 to 200 watts. That's where I'm sitting. So if I set my target too high, I'm going to change the nature of the workout because my range is going to go for either from, is going to include a higher domain. So I need to set my target, my anchor, at a, at a point where my range won't be overlapping into a different type of workout. So when you set, so set your anchor a bit low so you can maintain the type of training that you're targeting with the session. The other point is, as a developing athlete, your capacity to clear lactate, if you're doing these little micro spikes, all these little surges that you'll see um, new athletes doing, particularly when you're on a group ride with them, you don't have the ability to clear that lactate. So it's building up in your system. And if you're constantly spiking, you're going to be changing the nature of the workout and changing the nature of the fatigue you're giving yourself. So one of the first things, any sport, swim, bike, run, foundational skill, be smooth, have an easy zone that you can stay in regardless of the terrain, shifting before you need to before you arrive on the roller, not waiting to get like your power spiked and you're starting to load up and then bailing out the gear. Same deal with hills when you're running. Shorten that cadence up. Because the power and the pace is most useful at the top as you're coming over the roller rather than at the bottom when you're going in with speed. I got the idea for this slide from a conversation online with a Caltech professor last week and he was asking me his question was well given what you're saying um, why bother with zone 2 at all and I, I step back from the discussion of the zones because I feel like zones often are really confusing to athletes and even confusing between experienced athletes between world-renowned coaches who are helping very high level athletes, they're not meeting on the zone point. So I was like, you know, step back from it. Think about what you're trying to do and let's just target an anchor. Let's, let's set something that we're gonna focus on. So for endurance training, we wanna be training those slow twitch fibers. We're gonna anchor on the aerobic threshold. And we know, prior slide, that by anchoring on that, we're gonna be training a range some a little below, some a little above, some right on it. That's good enough. And then what we want to make sure we do is stay away from the heavy domain. So we want to keep, we want to stay, by, and by anchoring on that aerobic threshold, we're going to stay away from the heavy domain. We won't be going up. We're riding smooth, we're running smooth, whatever we're doing, we're going to keep that session very comfortable. And we can challenge ourselves with duration and frequency, and we can do a lot of time at this intensity. It's not going to wear us out providing we're properly fueled. Next, next level up, this T minus. What are we trying to do? We're trying to target the intermediate fibers. We're trying to give ourselves more overall aerobic capacity. And it's really important when we do this not to rev the engine too hard. You will be able to go way above this point, this anchor. And you shouldn't because you're going to change the nature of the session and you're going to limit your capacity to do this kind of work. 
So you're going to bring in all your fibers. You're going to flood yourself with lactate. So you want to stay well below the severe domain, well below your functional threshold. How do we do that? We're going to anchor on this 2.5 to 3 millimole type effort. And we're going to have the discipline using pace, power, lactate, checking in with our breathing, making sure our legs aren't burning. And we're going to have the discipline to use all of those things to keep a lid on it. So remember, when you're thinking about your more intense training, the bulk of this intense work is actually not that intense. You're going to be doing T-minus training. You're going to be able to roll up a fair amount of volume. If the session leaves you totally gassed, you were up in the severe domain and you sort of failed in terms of what you were targeting. So you need to think about, well, do I have my anchor points set right? Because if you're using a top-down method or a 20-minute test, unless you are extremely fit, your true anchors are going to be far below what the top-down method tells you. So the easiest way to check in with these anchors is a bottom-up method using the lactate protocol that I laid out for you in the first video. All right, hit me up online if you have any questions.